right now at 5. The Labor Day holiday weekend is here and it's going to stay a hot one. We have your holiday weekend forecast and mountain travel conditions. Businesses across the Front Range have become accustomed to expanded outdoor seating. It brings tourism dollars into Golden. It helps benefit the city and the community. Now, one local city is changing course and it has these business owners wondering what the future holds. I probably will lose in the next two months 40% of my revenue. Plus, how Coloradans are turning food waste into a token of appreciation for healthcare workers. There's a lot of joy and bringing something to people that deserve to have someone acknowledge them for what they're doing. First at five, we are taking a live look right now at our CDOT camera at I-70 near Floyd Hill, and you can see traffic is moving smoothly. It's not too busy right now as people try and make the most of their Labor Day holiday weekend. Good evening, and thank you for watching Denver 7 News at 5 for Denver 7 Plus. I'm Jacqueline Allen. And I'm Brian Wang. We certainly hope you're having a safe and happy start to your holiday weekend. And as we take a live look over the front range, we begin with meteorologist Stacy Donaldson on this unofficial end of summer. I know. Stacy. we're <laughs> going to see this heat all weekend long. And and it looks like it will be even warmer. We had some storms last night, a little bit of cooler air pushing in. So our temperatures today only in the upper 80s and low 90s. Now take that up by 10 degrees and that's what the rest of our holiday weekend is going to look like. We have an extended air quality warning through Sunday. Looks like we're going to have high ozone level levels here. So it's a little smoggy for the front range in through our Sunday. We also have some rain off to the west into the higher elevations. Most of that rain will stay up in the high country and into the foothills. We're not expecting rain here in Denver as we go through the rest of tonight. So our temperatures, they'll be in the mid 80s by the time we get to 7 o'clock, 80 degrees by 8 o'clock, and then 70s after that. So a nice mild evening for us here across the Front Range. As we go through the rest of our Labor Day forecast, we'll have 97 for Sunday's high, 98 on Monday with partly cloudy skies on the way. And I'll let you know when we'll finally see some rain moving into the seven day forecast coming up a little bit later. All right, thank you, Stacy. And because of this unseasonably warm weather we're seeing. Doctors are warning about the dangers of prolonged heat exposure. The elderly, very young, tourists, and people with chronic health issues are the most vulnerable right now. So doctors say check in on your older relatives this weekend, especially those who are homebound. And for people visiting Colorado this Labor Day's weekend, stay hydrated and know your limitations. And that's really the key is we're having to do a lot of adaptation when it's just 90 degrees every day, every day. Uh, and to stay safe or to, for your body to stay regulated, uh, you need all those mechanisms working, uh, working well. And we have a lot of isolated people still. There are still people that aren't really getting out and moving around. Uh, and they may be very vulnerable and uh, staying at home. And, and we really need to start looking at our friends and our neighbors and making sure they're staying safe. So if you're headed out on a hike or to the pool, remember sunscreen, loose fitting clothing, and don't wait until you're thirsty to drink water. Heat stroke is a serious illness. It only takes minutes for it to become life threatening. Labor Day weekend is the last weekend before a lot of fun summer places shut down. For example, this is the last weekend for Waterworld for humans. The park will reopen next Saturday for dogs. Elitch Gardens Water Park closes tomorrow, but the amusement park will be open weekends until Halloween. Aurora has two outdoor pools open this weekend, Del Mar and Meadow Hills, but they'll close after Labor Day. In the meantime, Denver has already closed its outdoor pools. Broomfield's Water Park, the Bay, is also closing Monday, but will reopen next Saturday for dogs. Right, the city of Golden is scaling back on what has become a staple during the pandemic, outdoor dining. But this only applies to Miner's Alley right now, making business owners there upset. As Denver 7's Christian Lopez shows us, they don't have much time before having to adjust to this new policy. Businesses here in Miner's Alley have until the end of Labor Day weekend before they have to stop offering outdoor dining. That means all of these tables and chairs you see here, they'll all be gone. The city of Golden will be opening up this alley to traffic for the first time in two years. Only the, the businesses here in the alley have been told we can no longer offer the same outdoor dining that other Golden businesses are allowed to offer. For Stephen Gold, offering outdoor dining became a lifeline during the pandemic, a lifeline that will now be gone in a few days. If they take outdoor dining away from us, then people are just going to take their business elsewhere on Washington where the city is allowing people to continue to offer outdoor dining. That's not his only concern. We're in an alley, and before we moved into this alley, 
people would tear through this alley at high rates of speed. We believe this, if this alley is open again to traffic, it's only a matter of time before somebody's hurt or killed. Time is running out. He is hoping that the city will reconsider its decision. I probably will lose in the next two months 40% of my revenue plus the additional costs for spent buying barriers and tables and etc. Plus I'm going to have to store them somewhere. I'm a small businessman. I'm going to have to rent storage space. So, you know, this is a negative not only for me, it's a negative for my employees. He says this would not only help his business, but the city overall. It brings tourism dollars into Golden. It helps benefit the city and the community. It creates jobs for Golden residents. And taking this away from the two of us in the alley just doesn't seem to be consistent with where the city of Golden is heading. And you can see just how close the alley is to the front door of the business. Now, Gold says that he is in constant communication with city council members because he is going to continue to fight this. Reporting in Golden, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. And it's interesting because both Denver and Boulder are looking to extend their outdoor dining models. Boulder launched a five-year outdoor dining pilot program, and Denver is looking at a similar model. Food, games, and live music. Sign me up. Thousands will be heading to the Taste of Colorado Festival at Civic Center Park. Music lovers can see local musicians play at any of the five music stages. And there are over 30 food trucks and restaurants to try, putting a spotlight on local businesses. We're just bringing out, you know, good Colorado product, trying to support the community. And they're really excited to showcase for the Denver local community and for just Colorado in general. Taste runs tomorrow and Monday from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Don't forget to bring a credit card because this year they are not doing tickets. That looks delicious. All right, shifting gears in Weld County, a 16-year-old boy shot during a road rage shooting is expected to survive tonight. This happened just after 10 this morning on US 85 between Platteville and Gilcrest. Investigators have not revealed what led up to this shooting, but tonight the sheriff's office is looking for two suspects. They are believed to be driving a dark blue Toyota Tundra with unknown license plates, and anyone with any information about this shooting should call the Well County Sheriff or Northern Colorado Crime Stoppers. Arvada police are warning residents about a tree trimming scam targeting older residents. Police say Amelia and Joseph Tyler offer tree trimming services. Well, they start the work and then request payment. Once they get the money, they leave and don't come back to finish the work. So anyone who sees these two should call the Arvada Police Department. A Cherry Creek High School mother is furious after she says her son was abandoned by his coaches and school leaders at DIA. We talked to Pamela Stegall and her son Bryson at DIA. Bryson says he forgot that there was a small knife in his back pocket. TSA, of course, detected the knife during a screening, so Bryson had to mail the knife home, then had to go through screening again and rush to his gate. We get this, right before the flight, Bryson says his athletic director told him he was no longer allowed to go on the trip and had to find his own way home. His mom was two hours away from DIA and Bryson had to wait by himself. This whole issue and the way this happened should not have happened to my child. And had he been hurt or had he gone missing, there would have been no one to answer for it. Segal says she's an educator herself. She understands that weapons of any kind have to be taken very seriously by school administrators. But she says that this is no excuse for leaving her son by himself to wait for hours with no adult to help him find his, home, his way home. In a statement to Denver 7, Cherry Creek schools say having a knife at DIA was a violation of both district policy and TSA regulations and they will have to investigate to see if next steps are needed. A Westminster couple has created a routine to give back to the men and women who've helped care for so many. For the last two years, Chris and Barry Hubbard go to Lamar's Donuts and Coffee and fill bins with the day's leftover donuts they, and then they deliver them to ER workers and first responders every Tuesday and Friday. The couple says their weekly deliveries are a way to thank our heroes for all the work that they've done during the pandemic. There's a lot of joy in bringing something to people that deserve to have someone acknowledge them for what they're doing. It really impacts the whole facility and increases that morale. And the Hubbards say they will continue to make these deliveries as long as they can. What a great idea. Yeah. All right, coming up next on Denver 7 News at 5, the growing drought all across the country could be having an impact you may not realize. What to be watching for on your property because of the drought. 
Plus, the pandemic prompted a pause for many things. We take a look at the return of a religious tradition that has continued for over a century.